The Osborne Association is a community-based organization with its home and heart in New York. We're mission-directed and passion-driven to serve people whose lives have been affected by the criminal justice system. We exist to demonstrate that there are less costly, more effective approaches than incarceration to address the needs of individuals, families, and communities. Over our 80-year history, we've grown, along with America's prison system, to serve 6,500 people each year. This number includes currently and previously imprisoned individuals and families affected by the confinement of a loved one. Our headquarters in the South Bronx is in the poorest congressional district in the country, and our sites include Brooklyn, the Hudson River Valley, 10 state prisons, and New York City's jail facilities on Rikers Island. Our founder, an industrialist turned prison reformer who served as warden of Sing Sing in the early 1900s, vowed to turn America's prisons from human scrap heaps into human repair shops. He believed, and we see every day, that people can change and that everyone deserves another chance. We seek to safely reduce America's reliance on incarceration. Did you know that we have the highest incarceration rates and the most prison and jail cells in the world? And that incarceration has led to the greatest separation of families since slavery? We have a staggering proportion of people of color with criminal records and employment gaps that reduce their earning power. And this significantly hampers their ability to provide emotional and material support to their partners and families. This problem is no longer isolated to a small number of people. Nearly a third of all Americans are arrested before their 23rd birthday. Osborne is committed to demonstrating that there are policies and practices that our country can adopt that will reduce crime and its economic and human costs. But we can't depend solely on government grants to reach this objective. We need to build a private base of support from concerned citizens who share our faith that we can safely send fewer people to prison for less time. We believe that treating people in their communities, where they can support their families, pay restitution to their victims, and receive the education and treatment they need to prevent further crime is essential. Osborne's the only organization in New York, and one of very few in the country, that has more than a two-decade track record of focusing on children and families of incarcerated parents. We organize and lead a collaboration, the New York Initiative on Children of Incarcerated Parents. Out of that work, we leverage relationships with dozens of nonprofit and government agencies to advocate for system reforms. These organizations include law enforcement and child welfare agencies, as well as 33 community and faith-based groups. Our advocacy focuses on meeting the needs and respecting the rights of children whose parents are involved in the justice system. We engage all parts of the public and private sector in this issue and help people understand that our clients aren't just pariahs, but are also parents who love their children and can contribute to their positive growth and development. This broadens the base of support for system reform and reduces the stigma that children of prisoners experience. Osborne uses logic modeling, studies research results, and engages in strategy planning to assure clarity about our long-term goals and the objectives required to achieve them. That's just one way we're effective. We're also successful because our staff includes people directly affected by incarceration. They're able to relate to our participants and model successful ways of living. Another key to our effectiveness is that Osborne approaches every person in the context of his or her family, regardless of how that's defined. We also use interventions that are trauma-informed, culturally relevant, and developmentally appropriate. Plus, we work with people while they're still incarcerated, and when they're released, and until they're reintegrated back into their families and communities. Another reason our programs work is that they're thoroughly prevention-oriented. They're focused on preventing crime by reducing recidivism and offering a path toward a crime-free life. Reintegrated families keep communities from breaking down, so we also offer diversion programs like drug treatment, 
parenting education, and employment services, addressing issues that contribute to reoffending. And finally, we encourage policymakers to consider approaches to crime and addiction that are less destructive to families and communities than incarceration. Osborne has historically sought to measure its outcomes, both to report to funders and for advocacy. We utilize key performance indicators, called KPIs, for all areas of the agency. This includes our programs, advocacy, and administration. These results are reported to and reviewed by executive staff, program personnel, and our board of directors quarterly. We utilize SMART goals. That means they are specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. Because we work within the justice system, we measure the recidivism of our participants. But we also measure their achievements in education, job retention, and family cohesion. We know our participants have enormous challenges. But by taking a strengths-based approach and using evidence-based interventions, we've achieved enormous success. Sometimes people ask, what about the victims? The truth is that we work with victim advocates and crime survivors to create approaches that address and respect their needs to be safe, to recover from the crime, and to regain control of their lives. Many prisoners were previously victims of abuse and violence themselves and never received the help they needed to deal with it. Research shows that the vast majority of women in prison have been victims of sexual and domestic violence. Ironically, the greatest risk factor for committing a violent crime is having been the victim of one. So the failure to address their needs affects all of us. Justice for all requires more than prison. We seek a justice system that doesn't just ask what's wrong with you, but what happened to you. Then we can enable our participants to accept responsibility for their crimes, make amends, and remain crime free. Osborne innovates programs that meet an emerging need and have potential to be replicated and scaled. We've pioneered numerous programs and many of them have been adopted by other community-based organizations and government agencies. For instance, we created the first comprehensive parenting program for fathers in a men's state prison. We initiated a national collect call AIDS hotline for prisoners and a toll-free helpline for their family members. We developed a collect call quit line to support prisoners who are trying to quit smoking. Osborne started New York's first intensive outpatient drug treatment program that serves as an alternative to incarceration. And we initiated a relationship education course for men and their partners delivered inside New York State prisons. We began a restorative justice program in a state prison designed by victims advocates and formerly incarcerated individuals working together targeting people who've been convicted of violent crimes. We designed the Green Career Center to prepare and train formerly incarcerated people for jobs in the emerging green sector, and we now launch new businesses and social enterprises that will employ our participants. Many donors are more attracted to causes related to education, art, youth, and poverty rather than prisons and the people who inhabit them. And politicians are concerned about appearing to be soft on crime. This makes both public and private investment in our work historically challenging. It isn't just funding that leaves us at the end of the line. When the national unemployment rate is 9 or 10 percent, the prison population and people leaving prison are facing a rate at least six times higher. We've turned more and more to earned income to support our programs. We've developed our own businesses to hire formerly incarcerated men and women and seek socially conscious investors as partners. We also encourage business owners and government agencies to hire people with criminal records and discover their value. With additional funds, we train our community, faith, and government partners to offer our parenting and relationship programs in prison and in the community. 
This would enable us to serve all family members who are deeply affected by the incarceration of a loved one. We'd like to expand our capacity to educate teachers, judges, attorneys, and psychologists, as well as law enforcement, including police, about the impact of parental incarceration and the need to reduce trauma and maintain the attachment between parents and their children. With equipment donated by Cisco, we're developing a model video conferencing project that actually connects parents with their children. Televisiting is for children whose parents are incarcerated far away and are difficult to see due to the time and cost of travel. A TV screen is never going to replace the touch that children need, so we want to ensure that this new technology won't replace contact visiting, but offer supplemental benefits to parents and children. Osborne's Green Career Center has the potential to grow in many ways. The center currently prepares and places people with criminal histories in green jobs, such as weatherization and energy auditing. With more resources, we'd add more hard skills training opportunities and create new jobs in green construction. We'd like to expand into other markets, like locally sourced food, solar, and other sustainable enterprises that have the potential to employ thousands of clients and reduce recidivism exponentially.